One of the most common questions I get from my patients when I start them on a GLP-1 medicine is, how should I know when to increase my dose of my dose. Hey, I'm Dr. Spencer Nadolsky, a triple board certified physician in family medicine. I specialize then in obesity medicine and lipidology. I've overseen thousands of patients and overseen tens of thousands of patients if you include all the doctors that I've overseen over the years. CEO and founder of Vineyard, where we actually give comprehensive metabolic and obesity care online. The trials, whether it's the STEP trials or the surmount trials, that's for Wegovy or ZepBound, they generally just crank them up at some sort of protocol regardless of the rate of weight loss and how they tolerate it. Some of the later trials do try to accommodate for intolerances to the medicine and they adjust it based on that, but none of them adjust it according to weight loss. So for example, if somebody's losing weight rapidly, faster than let's say 2% of their body weight, so let's say if you're 200 pounds, that would be four pounds per week. If somebody's losing that quickly, they're not adjusting their dose down in these trials. However, in practice, we generally try to keep them at the same dose if they are losing that quickly. I wanna tell you exactly how I do it in my practice. I've overseen thousands of patients myself and overseen tens of thousands of patients if you include all the doctors I've overseen over the years. This is the protocol that we do. Now I do want to preface this by saying there has not been a randomized trial looking at how we do it in clinical practice versus the trials that have just increased their dose no matter what. I can't tell you who's gonna be doing better in the long run if you just crank people up to the highest dose as quickly as possible versus going slower. But given what we know about other diets and different types of weight loss trials, I think this guidance will give you the best shot. So here's what we do. Number one, side effects always come first. If someone's feeling really nauseous from this medicine, it would be really silly to increase their dose. Now, of course, insurance sometimes wants you to go up no matter what, because that's how the trials were done. That's what's on the label of the prescription. However, if somebody's throwing up at, let's say, terzepatide or zepbound 2.5 milligrams, and you go up to five milligrams, they're probably gonna get sicker. So number one is always side effects. Look at side effects. I generally do a scale of zero to five, zero being no side effects at all, five being severe uh, nausea, throwing up, constipation, vomiting, all those different types of things. So if somebody is a two or less on a scale of five, again, this is just my scale that I use, it's probably okay in the side effect profile. Again, it's subjective, so you can always talk with the patient to know. So side effects are number one. If somebody's having a lot of side effects, three, four, five out of five, have that discussion, probably don't wanna go up in the dose. Again, insurance can push back, and that's when you have to write a letter, yell at the insurance and say, no, 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 this person's not tolerating the medicine. Please don't make them go up in the dose. Once you get past side effects, what I look at is rate of weight loss. In general, for these medicines and in weight loss in general, we look to see about a 0.5 or 0.5% to 1% of total body weight loss per week. So for example, let's say you're 200 pounds. 1% of body weight per week is two pounds per week. 0.5% is one pound per week. If you're in that range, you're going at a good rate. The reason we pick this rate of weight loss is because in general, when you go faster than 1% total body weight loss per week, you do risk increasing formation of gallstones in your gallbladder. These medicines do come at a risk of increasing gallstones and having gallbladder attacks. So ideally to prevent this, we would go a little bit slower, at least controlled uh, weight loss to prevent that. The other thing is that faster weight loss may actually increase your risk of muscle loss, no matter what the method, whether it's these medicines or if it's diet alone. So I like to shoot for 0.5% to 1% total body weight loss per week. If you're going over that, it might be water weight in the beginning. So in the first few weeks, you may actually increase and go to that 1.5, sometimes even 2% of total body weight loss right in the beginning, and then things slow down and even out over time. But in general, after that first month, it should be in that 0.5 to 1% total body weight loss per week. If somebody's going faster than that, don't wanna go up in their dose. And in some times, you even have to decrease the dose if they just keep losing weight. The other thing is, how far should somebody lose weight? If somebody's already a relatively leaner compared to someone who has a lot of weight to lose, let's say the person only has a 27 BMI body mass index and has like 30 pounds to lose to put them in a, a range where all their weight related issues go away how low should they go in general i don't like to go much below 21 bmi i've gone as low as 20 bmi some of my patients end up having a 19 bmi and they kind of hover between that 19 to 20 bmi i absolutely do not 
go below that though. And a lot of times I actually have to decrease the dose. If somebody's going lower than 0.5% of the total body weight loss per week and they don't have side effects, it's time to probably move up in the dose. The other thing to consider, if somebody's in that range of that 0.5 to 1% of their total body weight loss per week, but they're really hungry and they're probably not gonna stick to that rate for the next month, we generally go up. This way we can prevent weight plateaus before they happen. So we always look at appetite when we're talking to our patients as well. So they might not have side effects, they might be losing at a good rate, but they're pretty hungry, it's likely you're gonna need to go up in the dose. The next thing I look at is actually preference. So let's say that they don't have any side effects. Let's say that they're losing weight at a really good rate and you could go either way. You could go up in the dose, you might wanna stick to the dose, and the person says, I wanna stick to the same dose and everything else is good. Then we're gonna stick to the dose because you might as well talk to the patient and see what they prefer. If they wanna go up, you're probably gonna be able to go up. If they're losing weight too quickly, you say, hey, listen, I think we should just stick to this. You're losing weight pretty quickly. And if they wanna go up, you'd be like, hmm, Let's talk about this a little bit more. If they're having a lot of side effects and they want to go up, you'd say, well, why do you want to go up? You're having a lot of side effects, you're going to get more. But in general, if all things being equal, you go with the preference of what the person wants to do. And lastly, I actually take into account cost. Let's say somebody is self-pay and doesn't necessarily have a lot of money to pay for these medicines. They're going to Lilly Direct. They're paying $4.99 a month for their dose of medicine. All things being equal, I'm a little bit more aggressive about these patients because we might as well try to get a little bit more weight loss bang for their buck. There you have it. That's how I decide whether or not to go up or down or stay the same on my patient's doses.